Uh, Johnny Hill was on one, wasn't he? He was on a complete <laughs> wind up, like, mate. He was, you could tell he, he was into it. He was into it. And I, I, I don't know about you boys, but I reckon hair pulling is just as bad as headbutting. It may be, <laughs> maybe even worse. Hello, and welcome to the Rugby Pass Offload with Max Leave and Ryan Wilson. And shortly we'll be joined by Springbok legend and World Cup winner Brian Habana. Uh, before we get stuck into an incredible weekend of international rugby. Hello, guys. How how are we, Ryan? You're where are you? Oh, boys in France. I'm slightly dusty today. I've had to um, celebrate <laughs> seeing mine and Max's old mate Jeremy Manus. So we've had a couple of days down here in in the south of France, Bezier. A lovely little place called Nefis or something like that. <sighs> But, but wow, yeah, it's been good. I brought the kids though, don't worry, I brought the kids this time. Um, but it hasn't slowed me down. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> good man, good man. Uh, oh no, Max, Max, I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry, that's you back in, isn't it? That's me back in, pal, this first day yesterday, but it wasn't too bad. Lads around the Bronco, but me being the um, oldest man in the squad didn't have to run it, how good. Just did a little circuit on the off feats. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, so first thing was uh, Bronco straight into weights. No, and but like, hold on. You didn't have to run it. Mate, I'm 33 now. I'm an old timer. It's the beginning of the end for me. You're a bad lower. You have to do it. <laughs> I'm a prop. I've got bad lower back, and that leads to real referral issues down the calves, the hamstrings. Not good when you have to run for plus five minutes because I'm usually a, high, a mid five. That's a good oh time. Oh my god! I cannot believe you got away without doing it. I know. That's why. That's why Pat Lamb just went to come in because he's pissed off at you. It was a test. I, no, I'll tell you what actually happened yesterday. I've still got bad jet lag, and what happened was I slept straight through my alarm, so I walked into the meeting <laughs> about five, first meeting of free season, like five minutes late, ten minutes. No. Late. Yeah, and everyone was getting up doing intros. You get up, it's very high. I'm this guy just for all the new signings and stuff and obviously the props went first uh where's mix uh someone ring him <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> looking at my phone like i've woken up at like 8 30 the meeting starts at 8 30 i've woken up in my house at 8 30 i'm like oh my god so you just all panic stations alarm still ringing because i've slept through it for about an hour and i've just had to like haul ass i'm calling oh through god, through, the, through the country road oh the fear of the gods was within me. Oh, it was terrible. So great start to oh. preseason for me, anyway. Oh man, you know yeah. what though? They, they like you. You save it with the Instagram. You show them that you've been wrestling with men. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Skipping yeah. over no ropes, just swinging ropes around your body and stuff like that. And so they see that and yeah. go, "Well, he's obviously yeah. done his bit. Yeah. He's going hard. He's going hard. He's working. He's working." Obviously. I think I'm the other end of the spectrum. Where yeah, like, yeah. He's got yeah. to do it. He has to do it. <laughs> That's exactly what Pat Lamb is thinking. At least yeah. there's no skipping rope when he's just yeah. not there. Although what's nice is Dave Atwood seems to be, you know, correct every time about your about your timekeeping. Uh, Rai Rai, how were those uh, Budgie Smuggler Awards, the Ordinary Rig Contest, I believe? Oh my God, boys, things got very, very <laughs> weird, Max. You would have you would have been in your element. In your absolute element. So Budgie Smuggler went and hosted the UK's most ordinary rig 2022. And there was 10 contestants who had all sent in their videos to win the most ordinary rig UK. And oh my goodness, you should have seen this place. It was at a place called Lemon Beach in South Bank. And they'd like it was like they created like almost like a beach bar on right next to the Thames. Oh my god, that sounds class. Yeah, and there was sand, like it was all sand. So everyone's, so there's 200 people who stood in their budgie smugglers <laughs> in the middle, in the middle of South Bank, South people Bank. just walking past, like looking. Oh, and so like the guys had to get up and do like every every time they had to get up and do a different thing, a talent, a show and tell. Oh, but some of the stuff, mate, it was so funny. I, I was trying to host it, and I was in tears laughing because it was just so <laughs> ridiculous. Listen to this. One bloke was doing a stat, his show and tell, or his, his talent was doing, you know, the um, oh, Stavros Flatley, you know, the yeah. Bum, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, with the, the blonde wig, right? Guess who walks past when he's about to go up on stage and do the Stavros Flatley? Stavros Flatley 
no, the bloke, the little, ball, the little ball fella. So they've got him over and I've gone, mate, if if you can come and do a little bit on stage, it would be unreal. He was like, right, okay. So he sat and waited for about 45 minutes. This guy get, got up, the winner, Matty Burbeck, who's the UK's 2022 most order rig. And um, so he got up on stage and started again, dun, 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 doing the dance. And about 30 seconds in, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa cut the music, mate. And it, so Matty Burbeck had no idea, either. this kid had no idea that he was there. And I was like, mate, is that meant to be Stavros Slatter? And he was like, yeah, you should have seen the look on his face. He was so confused. I've cut the music. No one knew what was going on. I was like, well, let's get the real one up. And he's walked through the crowd and he's come up on stage. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? <laughs> Mate, I'm stood in the middle of South Bank, right in the middle of London, with 200 people in budgie smugglers, with a bloke dressed as... Is that his name, Stavros Flatley? Yeah, is that, I think it is Stavros Flatley. Yeah, I think you got it right. And and he's on stage with him doing the... Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've never seen anything like it, but oh, it was such a good day. It was yeah. so good, honestly. <laughs> It was That's wicked, so. No, it was good fun. It was good fun. <laughs> uh, well, boys, we were treated to one of the greatest weekends of international rugby in a very long time. And to help us uh, take a look at the games, we are delighted to be joined by none other than global rugby icon, Brian Habana. I was trying to get my timing right. Oh, there he is, Brian! Bling, 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 bling. How are you, sir? Can I just say, the reason I got the glasses on is I actually thought it was a stitch up when I got an email yesterday saying, please do, please can you do the reg rugby pass spot tomorrow? I'm like, Max Leheef is somewhere in Ibiza, like doing seal rows and bench pressing and Ryan Wilson, you know, British Virgin Islands. <laughs> there's no chance. It's a stitch up. It's an absolute stitch up. Um, yeah, so gentlemen, please. it's good to see you. How's everyone going? Lekker, uh, lekker, my butchie. Uh, very, very so, good, Ricky. How are so you? Like a, yeah, very good, hey? I appreciate that you guys um, have allowed me to miss my morning stand-up at work. Um, yeah, I've had to put in, had to do a few hours already, but uh, good, man. Very good. Cold in Cape Town. Uh, sun is shining, but not quite the European summer that I got to experience in, yeah, in London a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sure it's all right. I'm sure it's all right, mate. Well, we... Uh... To, to be fair, Brian, enjoyed your uh, your dulcet tones over the weekend in the uh, Wales South Africa uh, match. Um, actually, let's can we just start with you know the prediction from the fellas? Is there an apology to all our Welsh listeners now, Ryan and Max? Well, we're not we're we're not wrong yet, are we? You, you <laughs> sort of implied they were going to get absolutely hammered by South Africa. No, nah, we do. We we probably do. Like we yeah, no, we wrote them off. I think everyone wrote them off, though, didn't they? Like yeah. except Mark, and but Mark hasn't got a clue. So it's <laughs> a so lucky packet. Think... Lucky packet guess, Mark. Lucky packet guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, honestly, I like. I think we're going with everyone. And hey, I'm not. I'm I'm happy they proved this wrong. I'm happy that they yeah. they put up a big old fight and nearly did the job. But um, yeah, sorry on behalf of me, and Max, everyone. Yeah, we were we were maybe a little rash there, weren't we? But but we no. probably gained back some respect from our South African following, like because we get a lot of stick from them. We had obviously <laughs> given them all the plaudits, so oh, they're going to go out there and absolutely batter them. So that's, you know, you got to divvy it up. You got to divvy it up, boys. But yeah, it was good to see Wales actually play quite well. You know, and pull it back, and some of those boys that have been out for so long, like Dan Livia, back out there playing. Brilliant. Yeah. How good. Phenomenal. How good. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, that back row, that back, that loose forward trio was was phenomenal, um, just in terms of their physicality. So, I also said it's the box by fifteen. So I'm also happy to sort of say kudos to Wales. They they, they definitely brought it at Loftus, which I don't think anyone expected. No. Nah. Um, what's the feeling in South Africa? You know, it was an incredibly close win over Wales, but is it more one of relief or or, or frustration, perhaps? I think a bit of both, Mark. To be honest. I don't almost know what everyone expected. You know, we have, I think only 12 of the 23 are actually applying their trade in South Africa. Um, you had someone like Andre Pollard come off of Montpellier, top 14 victory, you know, couldn't be selected. Um, Alton Yankees had only played 30 minutes of rugby this year. So 
as much as Jock Ninaba had had alignment camps in a three, four of them ahead of the series, and there was always an expectation. And I think, unfortunately, when the expectation is there as world champions in front of your home crowd for the first time since becoming world champions, that you know, first time that stadiums you know have full capacity, there was just this massive expectation. But I think Wales brought an absolute mongrel to that fight, which you know the Springboks, you know. But it, it, I think it made for an intense, awesome test match. Really. I think, you know, World Rugby needed. Um, Lewis Rizamit scored a couple of first half tries. As a fellow winger, what, what, do you, what do you make of him as a player and, and how good do you think he can be? So everyone's been talking about Lewis Rizamit for the last two years. Uh, you know, I think he got sent home in the Six Nations because of a few reasons. You know, his defence, his, you know, his ability under the high ball. And you know, I think what he's shown over this past weekend was that he's, he's gone, taken a hard look at himself, worked on certain areas and... I mean, when you have the pace, it's one thing, but when your all-round game starts coming together, I think it's, it's it's pretty brilliant. And up against the likes of a Cheson Colby and a Makazoli Mapimpi, two two of the best in the world, he he definitely stood up. Um, I, I think his frustration when he got the yellow card was evident for everyone to see. I don't think we're going to go into the type of cursing he actually started doing on the sideline, which was pretty impressive for for a youngster. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah, the camera yeah, was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, potty yeah. mouth when he came on here. Do you remember? Absolute potty mouth. Old Manchester United wallpaper. Yeah. Nice. Uh, 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 the least Brian, media reckon... trade player ever, I think. Yeah. H- Habs, do you reckon you'd be quicker than him in your day? Definitely. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, I like flat that. Out. No, no, flat out. No, no. I mean, yeah, show you back yourself. It's like asking, do you have a better hairstyle than, than, than Max, right? You're going to say yes, obviously. Thank you. So I've got more. I don't know about better. I've got a little bit more, but I don't know about better. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Elton Yanti, and he he had a bit of a game to figure out at fly half. But nothing really seemed to go right for him. Can, can you remember a fly half having such a test match versus the Springboks, such a bad game uh, in your time? There's been a few throughout the throughout the last uh, you know last two decades, and you know I do feel sorry for Alton. I um, mean he's sort of been on the scene now for you know, the better part of the last decade. There's been a lot of expectation, and Alton really plays the best when his pack is going forward. And I think where Wales were exceptionally good is that physically they were you know matching the Springboks toe to toe in you know in the scrums, the line out malls, the one on one combats on you know on, on defence. And Alton just wasn't able to get you know the, the front foot ball. I think Puff de Klerk's inaccuracy as well with the boot, you know, was also not the best. But also when you've only played 30 minutes of rugby, you know, as much as you do you know, training sessions and contact sessions, and, and Jacques Nino was said it, you know, post post the the test match on Saturday, like there's nothing like the real combat. You, you just can't prepare yourself as as much as you know Max is now busy trying to bench 190 and you know get up to 200 by you know the time the season starts. Um, you know, the physical combat of a test match arena is nothing. So, so I do feel for Alton, but I also know that, you know, Jacques and, and Rassi and the management will, will definitely sort of back him and, you know, support him through this. I foresee a few number of changes being made um, this, this coming weekend. So it's going to be, yeah, going to be interesting to see how he goes. Um, but hopefully, you know, after now 70 minutes of rugby, he can continue improving. Max, what were your feelings about that one? How, you know, with Wales coming so close, even though you didn't predict it, you know, were, were you completely surprised by by what they showed? Yeah, I suppose uh, it's hard. It's good to see that Wales, Wales rugby. I mean, we were talking about there's a massive crisis and all this, and then suddenly they're bringing it to the uh, world champs. I thought uh, it was yeah, but it, again, it was. I thought it was down to that type five. Like you saw Roland's beard, Elias. Tommy Raffle. I think Tommy Raffle was probably man of the match for Wales, in my opinion. He was unbelievable. Like turnover day every day for that guy. Um, but yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was a little surprised. But then, when you look around at the caliber of um, athletes they have, when everyone's fully fit, maybe I was, um, yeah, maybe I was a bit too um, rash in my judgment of said caliber. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay with that in mind, fellas. Are we going to double down? I mean, I'm going to give you another chance. What, what do we think for the second test? Let's start with our. Oh no, Max, you, why don't you open the open the? I think the thing about the thing about South Africa is they're very good at making adjustments. Like they're always quite ta- they're very tactically driven, especially the way they play. Um, so I think I just think it'll they'll maybe still be cagey affairs, but I'm going to sit by what I originally said with the 
with the three the three games. I think now they'll be sort of more gun toting and ready for what's what's to come. I think even they were surprised. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> um, even though I've just apologised, yeah, I'm with you. I think, as Brian said, like a few of those players for South Africa haven't played much rugby. Now they've got a test match under the belt, they get better, which is iron for Wales. But yeah, we're, we're not going to completely write them off. Yeah. It'll be slightly closer. I'll go, I'm going to go South Africa by 10. I still think it's going to be 3 0, sadly. Yeah, I'd attend to, yeah. Probably agree with the thought shared. I think it's going to be interesting to see the team that Jacques Nino will kick, uh, selects for this weekend. Um, you have the likes of Ivan Ruiz, who, you know, URC player, you know, player of the season, was phenomenal for the Stormers. You got Henrik Pollard coming back. And the South African psyche, particularly when people start writing them off and they become angry, is always a very worrying thing potentially for the opposition. And Jacques would have known that they've been embarrassed in terms of the physicality and, and how, you know, well side and I think South Africa and Wales both play similar types of, of rugby. So, you know, when the physicality from the Welsh definitely gets there, you know, the, the kicking game and everything that comes with it is a very close affair. I am though very excited about an angry Springbok side that wants to, you know, physically go show potentially where they went wrong last week. So I said by 15 last week, I reckon at Bloemfontein, it's going to be it's going to be, hard. It's going to be more. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be more. I, I'm going to go with 14. I'm going to, I'm going to go with 14. Go with 14. Oh, you <laughs> shitbag. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, again, I think, you know, Wales had, they threw everything and the kitchen sink last weekend and like, kudos to them. Like the way they stepped up, it impressed everyone. Let's be honest. And I think the Springboks knew that it was a potential get out of jail card. Uh, but yeah, I think the you know, the ferocity in in the backlash of you know them wanting to step up physically this weekend is gonna gonna be something to yeah something to see. We're gonna get slagged off so much, gang. Because imagine <laughs> big, if bigger just not that that conversion yeah, over, so true. it could have yeah, been yeah, very yeah. very yeah. different. And no, we're still running, we're still written them off like oh, <laughs> what are we'll we be doing? Playing, they'll what be playing these doing? predictions on loop. In the yeah. changing room, don't you oh. worry, boys. Uh, right, let's head to Ryan's favourite topic now. Another England loss. Um, Brian, the the, one, the Wallabies had to play fourteen men for nearly fifty minutes. The second time in a row now that England can't beat a team with fourteen. It's their fourth successive defeat. What, what's going wrong for them? Yes, yeah, so I played a top fourteen final against Racing Metro at Camp New, just under hundred thousand people. One of the most incredible stadiums in the world. We, I think like in the 16th minute, Max Maschino gets a red card and Toulon starts celebrating. We're like, we're going to make history. The first ever top 14 final that, you know, gets played outside of France at one of the most incredible stadiums. This is going to be a walkover. We end up losing that game and freaking walk tail between our legs back to the change room. And it's like, what did we just do? <laughs> we lost against 14 men. And... It is the crappiest feeling in the world when you lose a game against 14 men. But it is often the case that it happens. So, yeah, I think Eddie's got a got a lot to think about. I do think the the psyche of a team that gets red carded immediately steps up in every facet of play because now you know you you know your back's against the wall and you know, you got to come out fighting. And uh, the manner in which Australia you know saw that game out was incredible. Um, yeah, I don't know where Eddie's you know Eddie gone wrong. I think I don't really think the Barbarians games counts in my opinion it, it was a game where there's not much on um but yeah i think a lot of pressure on a number of players i do think it was fabulous seeing danny Kean and, and billy vinipola out there who actually played brilliantly for for england and i'm guessing by the first touch he had international rugby and the try he scored uh henry arendelle and um, will probably be in the starting lineup this weekend because that was just absolutely insane wow so yeah i think um eddie jones is probably gonna you know throw yeah throw a few surprises in this weekend and it's back to the drawing board unfortunately and yeah, yeah it's just four times in a row it's it's, it's tough on a monday when you got to come in and again okay, we're gonna get back on the horse gentlemen it's time to time to do it again it's just funny to say about arundel because he's actually being compared to you as as you know, the new thing that always comes out, it's it's the, the next Brian Havana. Uh, but that's who he's been compared to in the papers this week. 
uh, for his playing style. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that and on him? Uh, my first touch in international rugby, I just had to run away from Josh Lucy. I didn't have to bounce two Australians, fend off James O'Connor and score a try. So I'm like, no, that's, that's a little bit better than, than Brian O'Banner. Um, I am extremely humbled uh, that I'm still being compared. I'm getting into my fifth decade of my life now. So extremely grateful that I'm still being compared to some, some lightning quick youngsters with that ability. Uh, but I think the try he scored at, at Stad Mayol uh, in, you know, a few weeks ago, definitely yeah. let everyone look up and say this, this bloke is proper. Um, so yeah, you know, long may his try scoring and his feet on the rugby field entertain the rugby world because he does seem an, an incredibly talented, focused individual, you know, in comparison to someone like Lewis Rezamant, who took a while to sort of find his feet in international rugby, you know, Aaron Dahl's just you know, put his hand up and said, I'm here and I'm probably here to stay for a very long time. I hope they don't, I hope they don't, because you worry, he got taken over as like a project plan, am I right? And then they've yeah. obviously gone, yeah. let's get him in as soon as we can, because I know that he was eligible to play for a few different teams. I just hope that Eddie Jones hasn't just played him and gone, right, that's it, and now we'll sit in the back. Just keep keep going with him. Like you said, let's see him start. Like he, he is unreal, eh, Max? You've seen a bit yeah, of him. No, he's, a bit, yeah, he's some, he's King Midas, everything he touches gets, gets, gets special. Yeah. He's some boy, yeah. Freakish out. Yeah, but I think I get it all. I get it. I get it all back him. I think what Eddie loves is players, you know, understand. Because I mean, Eddie's in, intense character. Let's be honest. Eddie, yeah. Eddie doesn't mince his words, <laughs> um, and he'll he'll have seen what he saw in that last seven minutes on on Saturday, and know that he's got something special. But he'll he'll nurture it properly, and and he'll be in Henry's ear the whole week this week if he does play, you know, telling him that mate, you're not working hard enough. Mate, work off your wing. Like, Eddie will be, mate, mate, you got to get better, mate, mate. So, you know, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie will be in him this whole week. And he looks like a youngster who's, who's really got his head, you know, properly on his shoulders. And, he looks intense, and doesn't he? Yeah. He looks intense. He looks committed. And, you know, he, he almost looks like a, a young Jack Noel, to be honest, you know, in terms of his, you know, the, the way he approaches the game. So, long, long way that lasts, you know, the more, the more we see of that in, in world rugby, I think the, the greater the game becomes, you know, we talk about trying to create new fans and, you know, explore new territories, but when you have guys like that ripping it up, you know, how is rugby not entertaining, which I, I can't wait to see some more of. And Max, you predicted that Australia would win, but one front row forward who caught it wrong was Joe Marler, who tweeted that this pack will eat them alive pre-kickoff. Uh, only to see England perhaps dominated. We, were you surprised by how unimpactful the English forwards were, considering sort of size and experience advantage? Yeah, I thought. I thought uh, to be fair, the selection was class, wasn't it? Like you saw that England pack. There was a lot of throwback guys, a lot of experience, some seri- like a lot of guys who had so much success against Australia. But um, I just thought like uh, Australia's approach to the chaos, like the speed of the ball, like Nick White was Chapetto. He was so good at like using the two sided attack getting the boys on the, like, Leo on the front foot. He was carrying so well. Whereas yeah. I felt like Danny Kerr was sort of hanging around a bit sometimes when he needs those options more, like guys just offering themselves up. I think that was the big separation there. Like, Australia were just using the pace of the ball a little bit cleverer. And um, England were sort of just ones and twos, a little bit slow, gave Australia's D time to, like, make shots. And guys like Michael Hooper don't need much. Like, and he was industrious, my God. And then the set piece battle probably didn't go as England planned. Like that, that scrum, that's a big psychological in. The first few are very messy, like Will Stewart in a contest with Angus Bell. Um, uh, Genji looked like he was getting the better of um, uh, Alatoa, and then he went off. Um, and then obviously, when the benches came on, you got Slipper and Scott Sear with so much international experience. And um, they got, they, 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 they managed to swing it and get a reel into the game towards the, the, the sort of dying minutes. But I thought Parecki also was very good. And he's he's a guy who's had, got a lot of premiership experience back in his Irish days. Really good set piece player. He was, he, I thought he, he scrummed really well. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a mad game. A uh, quick word on the Darcy Swain sending off for, for a headbutt on our friend of the show, Johnny Hill. Uh, with whom he had a running feud throughout. Ryan, uh, a man adept at the dark arts. Any complaints with that? Oh, Johnny Hill was on one, wasn't he? He was on a complete <laughs> wind up, like, mate. He was, you could tell he, he was into it. He was into it. And I, 
I, I don't know about you boys, but I reckon hair pulling is just as bad as head button. It may be, <laughs> maybe even worse. <laughs> especially especially the, the like the state of the head bite it wasn't a very good one either was it it wasn't so, even that good yeah it wasn't particularly like impactful was it it was just the it was, oh, it was just like a oh, it was like a it was like, like, eh, like a dolphin <laughs> do you know what I mean it wasn't like it wasn't too much in it I was like yeah but a head butt's a head butt obviously we, we don't we don't condone it do we Matt no we, we don't, don't. It, we, but if you're gonna do it do it properly <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a joke. No, no, right, wrong, right, wrong. right. No, that was you're also playing Iran. Just <laughs> you still another few seasons in you. No, 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 that is wrong. But definitely don't pull hair, like Johnny. Bad boy. Don't pull people's hair. And the other no. one, where the double palms to the face, straight in front of the referee, and absolutely yeah. nothing for it. I was like, what's going on there? What's going on there? So you what can you understand reckon? why. You reckon Dublé red for the palms of the face? Uh, nah, I wouldn't have said red. I think you got it right. Oh, uh, yellow. Red. No, red, red, yellow. yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've gone yellow for the palm. But just back on Joe Marler, have we? Has he walked down like Regent Street in a budgie smugglers with an Australian top? The wager that he had with Drew Mitchell. Did you boys see that on Twitter? Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, there's a brand new <laughs> He's wager. Good for it, I reckon he's very good for it. <laughs> No, but oh. I mean, uh, sorry, I, I haven't looked at socials uh, or okay, Twitter yeah. anyway, yesterday. I but I, I know there's the a way for the second test. I think now they're gonna they're they're off. No, let me check that. No? No, let's let's confirm that before the show's done. No, no, there was definitely a wager. Uh, I mean, Drew Mitchell's always game, and I know Joe is, but I just don't know when completion of the wager actually then happens. Um, I mean, it is summer, summer, summer in the UK, so I mean, Joe's not going to have a problem flaunting, you know, flaunting you know, bare chested um, you know, budgie smokers at all. I did. I did enjoy watching the last um, bit of the England Australia game at the Budgie Smuggler event with Andy Good. Oh, it was. was he... But then I, <laughs> oh my hate raging, and I'm like, just... I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I got really confident and bet my hundred quid in Scotland and beat Argentina <laughs> and lost. Right. Let's um. Let's well. Let's predict next week's. England, Australia, please. Starting with Brian. Oof. Yeah, I think Eddie would be absolutely fuming um, at the moment, and he'll be doing everything in his power to get um, yeah, to get those boys back. So I'm gonna go England by four uh, to make the series decider in week three a little bit more tasty. Boys, what did I say last week? I said. I, I said it'd be Aussie, England will just scrape the second one and Aussie will win the third. So I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it and reckon I'm, I'm going same as Brian. I reckon England by two. I, listen, I don't want it to happen that way. I would like to see 3 0, but I think that's going to happen. Oh, um, I'm going to stick with my original prediction, but it'll be very cagey again. I think it'll be closer, but yeah, uh, Oz, Oz by three. Max, just quickly, not to keep praising you too much, we don't like to do that on the show, but mm. you were completely right about uh, Man of the Match, Karevi. Uh, was he yeah. even better than you expected? Oh, yeah. uh, you just, uh, like, that guy gets the ball. And you, and he's also up against Joe Marginal and Aaron Farrell, and they're good defenders, don't get me wrong. But even if you're a tight five forward, if that bloke's running us unders line at you, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he was, he was irresistible, wasn't he? He's just unbelievable at getting you like quick front football, and then he's still got the awareness to distribute. He's just class, all class. That bloke, yeah, he was very good. And Coroy Bay, oh, I love oh him. my yeah, god! Yeah. When he gets a ball at the back, of it, he's like, "Who's having?" <laughs> I just love it, man. He's so quick, so aggressive. Oh, it was, it, they were they were a delight to to view. Yeah, mate. And what about Big Pistol Pete Sammer when he come on? And that's yeah, like, line he Pete runs. Sam. They're just. They're just getting front football, like you said, and why is at the back of it? Happy as Larry, just there, like you said, calling him the modern day Geppetto. Ch- yeah, but he was on flames, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, I love, uh, I love some of the stuff you say, Maxi boy. Right, let's move on to New Zealand versus Ireland. The All Blacks managing to put their COVID problems aside and banishing the bad memories of, of, of playing Ireland in recent years, actually, by. Uh, uh, trouncing them at Eden Park, producing yeah. a physical masterclass, outmuscling the Irish. Uh, Brian, were you were you surprised by how easily Ireland were overrun? 
Listen, there's a reason, Mark, why the All Blacks haven't lost at Eden Park since 1994. Um, it's, it's one of the toughest places to play rugby in the world. And there's just something in the New Zealand psyche culture where the standards are of such a level that it's, it's tough to go play then, you know, when you've got the history of Eden Park, but you've got an All Black team frothing at the mouth. And not to prove their doubt is wrong, you know, to, to literally just prove their own standards. And they were just, you know, as much as Ireland had a great start to the game, I just think the class and, and Ardy Sevilla, I mean, that oh, bloke man. is from oh, another oh, planet. It's try as well. Absolutely. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's the stuff kids look at and like, yeah. how do you not have a, have a superhero like that? It is just brilliant. And, you know, he's humility off the field, but, you know, yeah, I, mean, I think he led brilliantly. So, yeah, Ireland are going to have a tough going, I think, in the next two weeks to, to try to just get a little bit closer. And then that all black machine looks so good. Thanks, Max. No, no, thanks. You got your flex in for the day. Well done, Max. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> for you. Thanks. Yeah, got your flex in. Um, Jim, what I mean, you sort of what, six, 60 kilogram kettlebells this morning. Um, no, so yeah, I think you know, Ireland, you know, Andy Farrell, you know, set it straight. <laughs> Andy Farrell said it straight off the game, you know, they're going to have to front up, but just that, that all black machine just looks dominant at the moment. Oh, what was it like? They just took off, didn't they, in that first half? After the Irish score, you were just like, oh, this is going to be a long old day. That clip of, um, oh, I can't remember who it was, Barrett, I think, scoring on, when he gets the intercept and you see Omani behind him like, yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> made me chuckle. It did make me chuckle. Ugh. They were getting stuck into James Lowe as well, weren't they? Like, Ooh. they've all, oh, Ooh. but yeah, that's because he, he was, was getting stuck me. into them last time. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> but he dropped that ball, and then that obviously where he slipped and the intercept, and you could see him in his face. They were in his face, like, oh, here we go. Oh, I felt for him a little bit. Beauty. That's a long old day at the office for him. Long old day at the office. And is it weird though when you come up and you would have done it a bit where you come up against uh, guys from South Africa but who are playing for another country? And you know, is there kind of a slightly different mindset when you come up against them? You were going to try and refer to with my accent, weren't you? I know you were going to do it at some point, by the way. You were going to go like Brian when he goes and (laughs) play England, yeah. No, so so like literally every every test country we play against, um, in a South African in each one of them, one of those things. Um, yes. no, we, we we scattered all over the world, aren't we? No, I think, yeah, I think to be able to have the plethora of rugby talent that we do in South Africa, um, I think we are very fortunate, and unfortunately, you know, there can only be a select number of people. You know, South Africa also has very different psyches. You know, we have a you know. A, his, a history that's very different to any other rugby playing nation in the world and firstly i don't you know i don't really hold any grievance against players going to search for green pastures for various reasons you know, obviously there's the financial reason there's the potential chance of a different environment um and when you go to a different country it's not as easy as okay i'm just going to become an international there you've got to work exceptionally hard you know it's not just you know coming there and um, so, I mean, the likes of a CJ Stander, you know, is, is a prime example. He was literally in the Springbok setup as a 22 year old. Um, you know, Heineken Mayer brought him in with a group of Sia Khaleesi, Franz Mulherber, Louis Scrieda to sort of groom them. And, you know, he just believed there was other opportunity and, you know, went to experience, became one of the you know, greatest players, you know, in my opinion, that, that Ireland has seen in the loose four trio. So I don't begrudge any player. Um, there is obviously a bit of niggle because, you know, the page patriotism of how it will happen but again i think those players you know hold their head up high so yeah james lowe made a decision and i think the the, the biggest thing that happens in two you know to ryan's point when you stick it to someone and it goes well then it's all then it's all fine and dandy but if it starts going pear shaped you got to start remembering what happened um the last 80 minutes or, or the year before that so so i think that's where the the stickiness and the <laughs> the absolute dog comes out in both sides and like i said james lowe you know fully gave it to the All Blacks and rightly so. I mean, Ireland, you know, beat the All Blacks. I mean, why not have a ball if, but yeah, it's when it goes pear shaped, <laughs> you got to just put realize it out there. that. The... Put it out there, you got to be able to take it. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Max, you predicted an Irish victory. Well, no, I, I said 2-1 and Eden Park was the one that I predicted they'd lose. 
and can we just i'm gonna i'm gonna frame this i'm gonna be a little bit of a devil's advocate here the first three tries for new zealand were very much off the back of some sloppy irish stuff we've got aaron smith with the cheeky pick and go for the middle defensive laps we've got a mess up on the edge and then there's reese with the intercept like i still believe that and then Ireland had a few more opportunities before that to score two tries with uh, Ring Rose's break, et cetera. Um, so I still believe that Ireland can pull this out of the bag. I think New Zealand had a few big highlight reel moments, but they didn't have to work particularly hard to break them down in a lot of areas. And also there was a big, big psychological in with the scrum. And I think uh, Ireland scrum will fix that up. Uh, I think New Zealand's pack got on top of them and then when the scoreline started sort of dwindling away from them um you could see the body language completely changed new zealand were up uh, but the minute that first try where ireland were just grinding them with those inside balls just that 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 sort of leinster that leinster waltz where sexton's out the back he's got the boys just up the front up the middle throwing it up and like new zealand couldn't live with it but ireland found it difficult to sort of replicate that again and again um, which was strange. I thought they should have gone back to that sort of piston mindset, but um, I still, I still believe, lads. I still believe. Shoulder to shoulder. Let's go green. Let's go the men in green. Do you reckon they'll, get, they'll win, win this weekend? I think it'll be a real, yeah, tight. I think they'll win. So just confirming, Max, you're saying that New Zealand got lucky with their first three tries no, because of I'm Ireland's errors. I'm, 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 I'm not saying they got lucky. I'm, 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 I'm not understanding. You're saying... <laughs> Just the three the of them. Only the three. Just, just only three. Only yeah, three no, lucky tries. Okay. Like, okay. You know what it's like when you go up with three quick scores, though. Very difficult to get back, especially against a team like New Zealand. I'm just trying to change the narrative, lads. This is a podcast. We're gonna have a discussion. I'm confronting you and your narrative. Okay, so I'll just confirm you. you said <laughs> not lucky. Not Aaron, lucky. Aaron's, Aaron's quick tip was not his skill. It was more a defensive lap from Ireland. Well, you, know, quick tra- you know, pick, pick and, and the go chip go. over and the chip no, over was ones, like okay, those ones were unbelievable. But I'm talking about the pick and go and stuff. Those first, those oh, first okay. few that got them really ahead. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So no, the three, no, just no, confirming. No, so it's no. the first three. The first three were p- pure fluke by New Zealand. It Not was because pure fluke. I'm saying it was a lot more to do with Ireland's um, sloppiness. Okay. What I'm saying is, New Zealand were by far. Why are you going so red? Why? I don't understand why you're going so red, Max. (laughs) Put words in your mouth, Max. Don't let put words in your mouth. I never heard you say sloppy. He's he's mad (laughs) fucking me right now. Rent free at the moment, Max. Rent free. Uh, Yeah, oh my God. You're right in there. You're getting weird. But um, yeah, I still believe. But yes, New Zealand were the superior team, but I believe Ireland showed enough to show us that they could could compete. So give us a score prediction. So, So Ireland win by what? I'd say they win by uh, two. Is that is that also with twenty one points that don't count just at the start if it doesn't happen? Oh, hold on, man, Mark. Mark's on the <laughs> bandwagon. Look at him. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Mark, okay. Well, it's Fred, Freddie, and Ben will be out in a minute. <laughs> I got a stick. I got a stick with it, lads. I don't know. Hey, listen. I'll stick with what you want. Stick with what you want. But I'm I'm going all blacks. I think I'm going to carry on with what I thought. I think it's going to be three 0 to the All Blacks. But the best, best of that. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go All Blacks by at least eighteen this weekend. Um, oh. Dan Eden for, forces forces bar is a is a pretty cool stadium. It's dry. Um, the students in Dan Eden have an absolute oh, ringer at, at that yeah. stadium, and and the ABs love it there. So yeah, I'm going to go ABs by eighteen. Argentina versus Scotland. The great uh, Ryan will be all right, Wilson. Uh, in a 26-18 defeat to Argentina. Uh, Rai, linchpins weren't there, Hoggy and, and, and Finn, but did, did you expect a bit better from your boys? Yeah, I did. I mean, they stuck in the game. I mean, it'll come up to, I think it was nearly 60 minutes. It was 18 all. So they managed to get themselves back into the game, but they just made a few little silly errors after, like they, after they scored. Uh, Argentina kick off, win the ball back, score straight away, and, and sort of put it put it out. But yeah, I did expect a bit better. But again, you know, there's a lot of guys that haven't played much international rugby, well, in a long time. Like said, Matt um, Matt Ferguson coming back from an injury, I think it was a broken arm. Um, he's been out for ages, and uh, but it's good to see some of the guys like Rory Hutchinson back out there. Blair Kinghorn playing at ten. Um, 
So, oh, we'll be all right. I did say, okay, I did say, <laughs> I said, I think Argentina might scrape one and Scotland will win two. I didn't say which way around, like Max was saying. So, my, my predictions <laughs> are still, just, still there. always keep a card at the back. I did somehow <laughs> put one in. My, my words last week were, boys, I, I hope Scotland doesn't win 3 0 over there, but I think it's going to be 2 1. I reckon the Argers will scrape one of them. And that was the one. Although Argentina were good. And it was, you know what? Brilliant to see Argentina play well, especially under the new coach and seeing them back out there with a little bit of something. So, yeah, all to play for. It's fine. But um, yeah, I lost 100 quid to Andy Good. He did then say 1,000 quid. And I was like, whoa, I'm all right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, big guy. <laughs> yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Big spender, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, uh, I mean, does everyone agree? Matt, quick quick one for, for, for next weekend. Uh, Max, Brian, Scotland, Argentina. I think RGs will keep it going, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it might be a little bit closer. I think, you know, yeah. it's five points in it a little bit more. But yeah, the Scots would have taken a lot of positivity out of, you know, the first 60 minutes they had. Um, David Chick will also be laying into the Aussies, uh, um, the Argentinians a little bit more with his Aussie accent. Um, and a new regime. So yeah, I mean, it, it does make for great test match rugby though. You know, when you, when you sit there and you actually say, like, we actually don't know who's going to win. You know, you know, and yes, it was Southern Hemisphere domination. Um, well, I mean, not quite sure the French over in Japan were quite, you know, keeping the flag lit with the you know, beating Japan. But I think, you know, from a northern hemisphere, it's it's always tough end end of a season, you know, it's and not that you want to have it as an excuse, um, but it's just yeah, it's, you know, southern hemisphere dominance. So you'd you'd feel that, you know, at least the, the northern hemisphere boys would want to put their hands up and you know, Scotland will, in my opinion, take a lot out of how they, you know, played for the first sixty. One or two areas that unfortunately, you know, saw. Argentina you know, dominate that last stanza, but it's great for Test Match Rugby, you know, when you literally just don't know how to call it. Yeah. Just quick one on the on a surprising result, how Tonga's new look team, uh, your pal, Pietau, um, Fekitoa, Falau, got slightly destroyed by Fiji. Ryan, were you happy to see your, your honourable adopted country put in such a dominant performance? Yeah, Fiji, remember, Fiji are bloody good, like under Vern Cotter as well. It's a, it's a tough old ass playing against Fiji. And with the Fijian Drua team like going so well as well, like they're getting some they're getting some players through the through the ringer now. Fiji, I reckon, are gonna be a dark horse coming into the World Cup. Like I'm excited to see how they go. I absolutely love watching Fiji. I didn't actually see the game to be fair, but um I love them. So yeah, it's a it was a tough one, tough ass for Tonga. And you know you chuck a few superstars in there. You still got to have a pack to play off, don't you, Max? Yeah, exactly. You can't just, just expect screwed. these boys in the backline to do everything. Don't be like Charles Pietau, Israel Folau, go do everything for us. Yeah, it doesn't work like that, does it? And I think, yeah, right. like you said, a Vern Cotter Fiji, they're going to be well drilled with, and he's I probably he's probably tempered that sort of free flowing rugby they play, and with the Drua. They're now playing like regular professional rugby with those sort of young and up and comers. Yeah, it's it's always yeah. going to be a tough ask, I think. Tosoviti, Tosoviti. Ryan, you, you, um, mentioned, you, you mentioned the Southern Hemisphere dominance over the Northern Hemisphere teams at the weekend. Uh, are, are you excited potentially by the prospect of, of South Africa joining the Six Nations or where, where do you stand on that question? Um, I'd like to take the Fifth Amendment, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what we, no, you know, no, I'm joking. No, no, I'm joking. So, I mean, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. It's I think as as players, it must be incredibly tough at the moment to be playing your club season in the Northern Hemisphere calendar and then playing in the Southern Hemisphere international season. So, you know, you have box that have just you know again a big contingent of them are playing in Europe. And now they've got to come back and you know play a rugby championship post this you know this tour. So it's really going to be interesting. You know, there's so much talk in the rugby circles. You know, you got the the VC the VC chats. Um, you know, happening with private equity. You know, potentially coming in. Um, and South African rugby is in a state where we're in limbo at the moment. You know, it's just so difficult. So the only realistic solution would be to go up north. But how, I just, I don't know how that's going to play out though. You know, does it become a seven nations? You know, we talk about player welfare and all this happening already. Um, I don't believe the six nations would just easily open up 
to another contender because if that become a seven nations or if it stays a six nations is there elimination for the last team you know how, how things work I, I just so if someone can explain to me how it would work i can then deliver an opinion but i just i don't and i don't understand how it's going to work at the moment so yeah it's, it's interesting i think it is gearing <clears throat> towards south africa moving up north um but you hear that deals have been signed until 2027 in southern hemisphere you're hearing all these things so i just think there's no clarity and i do think it's extremely confusing for the players because yeah it's a it's a brutal old season that's now literally 12 months a year because they're playing in both hemispheres you know across the across the season which is incredibly tough all right Brian, what, what's your take on um backy's critique of evans um to long form the Bucky's does not mince his words. He eats his mints, um, a lot of it. Um, a, a two world-class players, in my opinion. Uh, you know, even, I mean, he'll be the next Centurion um, in, I think, two games' time. And a guy who's given so much to South African rugby. I, I do think he's been unfortunate in terms of injuries. And I got told exactly the same thing. You know, you know, we got told we mercenaries. I got called in by by Bernard Laporte, the one I, I wanted to play sevens. I tried to make the 2016 Rio Olympics. And I get back from from the end of year two and I've obviously I, I've been injured, went to the spring box. I come back and I said, and listen guys, I'm I'm done. And Bernard Laporte said, can I, I, I want to go play sevens. He goes, I know you, then your your contract's finished. You know, we're going to get Julian Sevilla in. I'm like, but that's not, you know, he said, no, you can go to the sevens, but then you, you don't have a contract with, I'm like, guys, my contract's like for another year and a half. You got, um, so Bucky's critique, again, Bucky is, is a good man. And unfortunately, when you say something to the media, it tends to get taken out of context. Um, and yeah, like I, say, I know it didn't, yeah, potentially didn't help their friendship, but I'm not sure if you boys watched the, the semi-final of the Challenge Cup when Delon played against Saracens and Eben wasn't absolute monster he like dominated that series back and i sort of put on to because then the president also then said like you know Ev evan is a handicap to the club i'm like cheap scoops like see the guys first the injury is not part of your you know not part of your yeah, game exactly, plan yeah, anyway yeah. and evan's a monster like evan like wears his heart on his sleeve and he's one of the, the biggest bruisers in world rugby um it'll be interesting to see him and bucky's go toe to toe I don't know who, who, who I'd call Bucky is, is, a, is a man mountain of note. So, yeah, I think Bucky did win. You know, he did win three European championships at Toulon, you know, one top 14. So, you know, I understand where he was coming from. Um, and it's always tough as a former player when you say something and it eventually gets taken out of context because we all hate it. Like, you know, when, again, not to be talking about the players, but it's, it's, it's crap when you hear things like that. Was it valid or just? I think it was tough um, for Evan because again he didn't you know, he didn't want to get himself injured and when he did play for Toulon he was he was pretty decent so yeah it was it was, it was always good seeing the social media presence um, happening always good always nice yeah <laughs> I would say that Bastaro was 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 the loosest man he'd ever played rugby with or one of them what what are your kind of craziest memories of him on on or off the pitch loose as in on the piss or loose? I mean, I didn't actually get to witness bust a lot, a loose. Um, both, I uh, mean, potentially on or off. No, he's a good man. I, I enjoy it. He, he's, he's a very unique individual, Matthew Bassero. Um, very precise in how he wants things done. And obviously, you know, got put in cotton wool a lot by Toulon. Uh, but i got to play. I mean, so one of the scariest guys I've ever played with has got to be... Okay, there were a few Georgians, but Mamuka Gogotsi, like that guy, I'd literally, yeah, you'd be scared to walk past him. Like, you'd honestly be like, you wouldn't want to put a foot wrong. Um, there were a few punch-ups on uh, on a training field where Mamuka just let rip. And I'll never forget, um, he, he loves, so Mamuka's a very stylish guy. And Ma Nonu um, had got a pair of these Adidas Yeezys, you know, these freaking cool Kanye West shoes. And they were still like very rare, very intricate. And he, um, Mamuka was like looking for Yeezy, looking for Yeezy. And then like he asked Ma, does Ma have a contact? He's with Adidas. And Ma's like, listen, you can, you can have my pair of size 12s. And Ma then gifts Mamuka this pair of uh, size 12 Adidas Yeezys. And like, he's like thankful. And Ma gets to training the next morning. And Mamuka Gugotsi comes in and he goes, Ma, I want to say thank you for the shoes. And, and gives him a knife. <laughs> Well, no, is like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> and it's like, 
you know, no, I take it for you. It's it, and obviously it's, it's like this big symbol of appreciation and respect and everything. Like when we could go, go, go to get some manu a knife in the changing room, we all like, okay, we're gonna leave now. Um, we're gonna close this door. Whatever's happening here, please don't bring it inside. Um, one, I mean, he's, he's an absolute gent, is Mamuka, but like one of the scariest blokes. Like you just you don't want to step in any way on his wrong side because I saw a few punches being thrown, and I'm like, that's why I don't play in the forwards, especially with Mamuka Gagotsi. <laughs> yeah, man. Whoa. <laughs> the Georgians, I, but yeah, fun times. Brian, let's uh, let's just finish off quickly. Quick fire answers, first things that come into your head. Toughest team you've Max ever played Leaf. against. Max Leaf. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Always. <laughs> not, not, yeah, first things that come into your head when you're dreaming, when you're asleep, obviously is Max. Uh, toughest team you've ever played against in your career? All Blacks. Biggest fight you've ever witnessed in training? Amuka Gagotsi and Marcel van der Merwe. Oh, that might be good. God, scar man. Best player you've ever played against? Richard McCall. <clears throat> Worst enemy in rugby? Sebi Vato. Oh. <laughs> no, he's not enemy. He's a good man. Ooh, worst enemy. Oh, that's a tough one. Okay, I'll come back to that one. Sorry, there's, I'm, I'm trying to think. It's just because there's quite a few names in my head. So I should have <laughs> Top three. Top three. Top three. <laughs> Oh, top three. So I was going to play against him, but playing against Chris Ashton, uh, particularly when he was going so well at Saracen, was was extremely irritating. He, he was just so good, um, but it, yeah, it did um, yeah, it did make for some some interesting times. Um, Bullock and Roddy, myself and him had a few proper proper um, backline handbag stuff uh, between the Bulls and and the Stormers a, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I'll go those two, Chris Ashton, Bullock and Roddy. But but we're good now, so. Be uh, loosest teammate you've ever played with? Steph Armitage. Oh, that's a great shout. <clears throat> three players in, in the cab with you for the biggest night of your life. Doc Free. Um, like he's just incredible. Skulkberger, that man has got an engine on him uh, that just goes for ages. And Dan Carter, um, yeah, Dan's it'll purely be to get free entry to everywhere we go. Yeah, he'll get you in wherever you want. <laughs> exactly. Good for a side team as well, that. <laughs> yeah, solid, solid. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Well, sadly, that is all the time we've got. To... Uh, left for this week a huge thank you to ryan uh, to max and to brian and uh, we will see you all next week cheers guys bye <laughs>